honest conversations with interesting people. Hi, I'm Mike from the Genuine Chit Chat Podcast, and I talk to a wide variety of guests across an eclectic range of interesting topics. People I've spoken to include a magister from the Church of Satan, a blind Australian filmmaker, a puppeteer from Labyrinth and Dark Crystal, and I also speak to musicians of all kinds of genres, authors, actors, podcasters. Really, there is no limit to who I speak to, and the subject matter is endless. So if you believe in the art of conversation and want to hear different people talking about their passions, then this is the perfect show for you. You can find Genuine Chit Chat anywhere you listen to podcasts, and there's some video versions on YouTube, so there's no reason not to tune in. I am from beyond. Listen, and all you desire will be yours. Welcome to Spider-Man and the Secret Wars. Prepare for battle. Nativity Stories Welcome to Prattle World. I am your host, the ever-amazing, ever-spectacular Spider-Dan. And in this podcast, I spotlight entertainment's best-kept secrets that a mainstream audience may find boring. And welcome to Alternativity Stories, a month-long look at alternative stories set around the most wonderful time of year. And this one goes out to you, or you teenage comet zombies. We are looking at Night of the Comet, uh, a feminist B-movie of insane and very (laughs) calcium-dusty levels of, uh, of unique... Um, and I have Tony Farina here with me once again, the angel, uh, not of death, but of of the airwaves. <laughs> Hello, angel of death. Uh, the drinking age has been lowered to ten, but you'll need to, you'll still need to have ID. Let's be serious. <laughs> Well, thank you, Tony, and thank you for for coming on here at such oh. short notice as well. I was I was planning on having Hannah and Nathan, the previous guests, um, uh, but unfortunately, they are very busy being in Panto, or rather, sort of not being in Panto. It's all up in the air over because here. of the COVID being a dick. Oh yeah, super yeah, super yeah. COVID is happening. The Unicron or whatever you want to call it. It's Omicron. Omicron. The world's fav- The world's worst Decepticon. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it's not going well. So there's a lot of problems with that. And, you know, we may well go into a lockdown at this point. Um, but who knows? Who knows? But uh, I'm very glad that you've been able to find the time to do this. And well, I, 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 I believe love this movie. I was going to say, <laughs> you said, you said, you said, I'm really looking forward to this. And I went, well, if this doesn't happen, which I, you know, if these guys can't do it, I know someone who would love to do it. So Tony, ah. just let it all out. Let it hang out. Tell us a little bit about the film and tell us your personal experience with this film. Okay. Well, you always ask, and I was prepared today and I yep. love it because the summary is so easy. Like I get the log line of this, like Tom Eberhardt, who sold this movie and direct wrote, directed it. He was like, listen, Christmas comet zombies and you're like sold the end that's the movie a comet comes by and in typical and it happens and it takes place in the in los angeles so it's a very american centric thing mm. um there's a lot of that there's a love letter to day of the dead obviously mm. okay. um right no a little bit, a little dawn, bit of- dawn Dawn. In the mall, in the mall, the one in the mall. In the mall is dawn. Yeah, yeah. that is yeah. dawn. Yeah. Dawn, not day. The thing about it is, is so it's it's an American centric look at survivors of this comet goes by. It kills a lot of people unless rules, which are shady, which I'm sure we'll discuss. <laughs> and our two leads, Regina and Sam Belmont, which I, I we'll talk about their names because I think mm. it's actually brilliant writing. When we get there, um, they're these sisters that just both happen to survive and whacking us into zombies. The government's there. I was so I was 11 when this movie came out, and because I'm old, and you the other day on your show said, "Oh, I was born in 1988." And you made some old joke about. I did. Stuff. I know. Fuck off, Dan. <laughs> Just telling you right now, 1973, old man walking. No, here's the deal. No, I get it. I understand. You feel how you feel. It's all relative. But uh, <laughs> I heard you say that. I did say it out You're loud like, though. What a, house, what myself, a like, wanker! Off, <laughs> yeah, it's all. It's all good. Anywho, no, I, was, I, was I, feeling, I was feeling my age of that day. I was like, Ooh, that's I'm totally old. fair. No, I'm I mean, old. you were still born in the last century. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people weren't. Like, majority of people weren't. I know. So, I know. Those Gen Z kids, man. I've got 
several of them. They're taking over. Anyway, here's the thing. The, the, the early days of cable. So like I got cable when I was like 12 or 13. So before cable or before streaming kids streaming, there was this thing called cable. And before that, there was just like free TV where you had to put an antenna up and you'd get whatever was in the air. And so that's actually how I saw rock and roll high school was through the free TV. And, you know, that still is very important to me. And Roger Corman is a big deal to me. Um, this movie would have probably was also on WGN out of Chicago, but this was in the early days of cable. So we had cable and there was like TNT and USA and like early HBO, like shows channels that still exist. But at the time, there were only a handful of movies that people thought were like, well, this, you know, that were available to, to play. Hmm. So they bought them all and they played them on a loop. So I saw, and then this is totally true, Night of the Comet at least 40 or 50 times. I, I mean, over the course of a five year span, I saw it 10 times, 12 times a year for four or five years. So between like, 12 and 16, 12 and 17, this, this movie was on, I would just stop whatever network it was, unedited, edited, watching it unedited this time. I was like, I didn't remember this much swearing. There's not a lot, but I was like, no, oh, I didn't. Because again, you see it with the edits and you know when the commercial breaks. It, it's weird because it, it does have that feel of like, like I think this would be a good, if you're introducing a young person to horror movies, I think this might be a good shout because it's not overtly violent it's not overtly sexual but it has enough of that element of horror but then it yeah. also has its sense of fun and playfulness as well so i i imagine like showing this to like a mature i don't know 15 year old or something um might be a good way for the to get them into the more kind of scary and disturbing stuff uh, but yeah. please please carry on no no i agree no that makes perfect sense everything that you just said makes perfect sense so um, so this was just a movie that was in my rotation, and our lead was also in um... Last Starfighter. And I mean, she's into video games in this. And then it she only, is. only makes sense that she get into a guy who's also into video games in another yeah, yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kath, yeah, Catherine Mary Stewart is the actress's name. She plays Regina. Um, so it's like, so that I love Last Starfighter too. You know, so it's like she was already there. I mean, that's um, another that's another podcast, Tony. Like that's another Last podcast we can do. Really, we can people do don't that. like Last Starfighter. I, th I think so. Well, I, I'm not sure if Andy would like it. It's because it's, he's probably seen enough uh, Star Wars ripoffs for a lifetime now. Listen, <laughs> I don't want to hear how that's a Star Wars ripoff. I'm not saying this. I'm not saying this. I like it. All right, it. well, I love you, Andy. <laughs> it's all good. So it was, Captain Mary Stewart was in it. So that was the hook for me because I knew who cool. she was from that movie. And so it was just on. It was one of those things that was just on all the time. And, it's, and, and this, and of course, Grease 2, were on a, in constant loop. So I've seen each of them 30, 40, 50 times just because they were on all the time. Like I can sing all the Grease 2 songs. This is the early days of cable. And it was like, here's a movie that you didn't see. Early cable was, this movie didn't do well in the theater, but we can get it for cheap. So we're just going to play it on a loop and we bet people will watch it. And we did. This, this is the thing though. This was a success. Like if you look at the budget, the budget was only 700,000. And it made oh, was it really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, so it's very low budget. So you know, and there's of obviously course. they're cutting corners, but they want that. I think it adds to the B movie style oh, yeah, and element right. of it. Seven hundred thousand. It made fourteen million. Fourteen million. So that's about. I've looked up the adjusted uh, adjusted for inflation. That's yeah, yeah. Th that's thirty nine million. So that's wow. not. That's not. This is a cult movie that really isn't necessarily a cult movie in regards to like box office. The review, I had no idea. The reviews are also really good. Like it's, it's bizarre. I just, I think the, the issue I think with the film is that I really enjoyed watching it this time because I knew what I was getting. And I think the problem with this film is if you're going in going, oh, zombies, yeah, like you said, Dawn of the Dead and or like Day yeah. of the Triffids or the Omega Man, if you're looking for those kind of, a desolate Omega oh, Man is there's some calls to Omega Man in oh, definitely with the mannequins for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And and if you're looking for that, this is not that. This is, you know, I, I think the inspiration initially, apart from those kind of classic things, were were things like the film Valley Girl. I Deborah Foreman. Listen, <laughs> she's a queen. And I'll tell you, she's also in a movie called My Chauffeur, which is excellent. Yeah, you know what? I've heard yeah. of this. I've heard of yes. this. Yeah. And she has like a small role in uh uh, real genius. Also, she is in a mm, kind of wobbly slasher movie called April Fool's Day. April Fool don't say wobbly to April Fool's Day. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> you know, How I've, dare you? I've got mixed fear. I've got mixed feelings about it. Okay. I love April uh, Fool's Day. Well, no, if don't we, worry. You know, don't worry. The podcast we, in April. We'll be back. Obviously, to talk about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Deborah Foreman was like a queen for a long time for me, and she actually shows up in the new Valley Girl movie. 
Oh, wow, really? He plays the shop girl. Amazing. Well, yeah, which I, I enjoyed I, the, the new Valley Girl movie. Not like I love the original. But Nick Cage didn't do a cameo. Super disappointing. Like yeah. at any moment, you're going to turn the corner and Nick Cage is going to be there, totally eyes bugging out. I mean, that's that's a po- that's another podcast for us, Tony. We could uh, do a clone balls okay. on, on the Valley Girls. On sure. the Valley Girls. Um, whatever. I mean, I, yeah, no, no. I hear what you're saying. But um, no, you're right. You're totally right about that. Yeah. And so it's it's weird that it's got this cult status, but yeah, I do think if you go in expecting one thing and come come out, you know, you could you can be totally turned around by this movie, like I was. But again, if you don't get into the style or the idea or the you know the themes and what it's trying to say, I think you can come out and be like, okay, that's not quite what I expected, but it was okay. And I think I think you need to know what you're going in for. I think I, I also. I don't know if it was maybe marketed in the right way. I know the producers had a massive issue with the tone and a lot of the ideas and stuff that Tommy Bahar wanted to do with this. Um, and I think he wanted, apparently he wanted to do like an animated series, a sequel. And even I mean, recently, so. even recently, Kelly Maroney was like fighting for a few years ago, uh, who plays Samantha. Yeah, um, yeah. She was fighting to get the rights back. Uh, off off the company. I don't know which, I can't remember which company is off the top of my head. And they just said, no, they're just like, they're not doing anything with it. Um, but then uh, and a director recently, well, 2019 was writing the script for a remake, but then we've not heard anything else from that. Um, she did a few like short films or like Southbound and some other kind of horror, you know, uh, anthology films and stuff. She, what was her name? I can't remember. I'll, we'll look it up later. But anyway, you carry on. You carry on. No, no, no. I love this. I love that you're you get it. You're getting what it does. So here's the thing. So I'm like, like I said, 12, 13 when I see it for the first time. I did not see this one in the theater at all. Um, I don't remember it playing. I didn't know what it existed until it was just like on my TV all the time. All the time. It was on my TV. And I... Loved everything about it. The pacing was good. The 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 right timing of jokes. Kelly Maroney's charm just jumps off the screen. As a hormonal teenage boy, she and Catherine both jump off the screen, like in your brain. But like also just like as an adult watching it, they're just so charming and delightful. And you believe they're sisters. Hmm. What I I think Tom has written a super tight script. There's a lot of shorthand. And I appreciate that at no point, I mean, this is what, 90 minutes, 93. Hmm. Exposition man can go fuck himself. There's an open, <laughs> there's an opening crawl where there's like a voiceover guy. He's like, blah, blah, blah. And honestly, when I first started playing it again for this watch, I was like, wait, why is there a dude's name who's listed as top billing? And I was like, am I clicked on the wrong thing? But hmm. no, I don't even know who it was. I didn't even go back and look because whoever that man was who was top billing, you are not top billing. This is not your movie. This is Catherine Mary Stewart's movie. I don't know why you think you get to be top bill. You know, sometimes that happens where you get like a like a guy. Mm. I assume it's the guy who plays the the big bad, um, Jeffrey Lewis. I assume maybe. it was him because yeah, he's maybe. like a guy who you've seen and stuff. But you're just like, yeah, yeah, no, no. You don't get to be. You're not top billing. I don't need you. But it was just like it spoke right to me. And it's kind of like why I love Heathers. There's something about a movie that doesn't dumb it down to its audience. So this is a movie about teenagers, for teenagers, written trusting teenagers to follow along, where now I get really frustrating, frustrated when you watch a movie, and you're like Red Notice, which I enjoyed very much. But there's a scene in Red Notice where they're like, Gal Gadot's here. She's going to tell you what you already knew. And you're like, we're watching, like my wife even said, well, we hit pause. because She's like, we know. Like she's talking to this. She's like, yeah, 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 we know. Hmm. We know, we, we get it. We see you're the bad, we knew you're Bishop. You don't need to tell us we're not stupid. But there's something about modern audiences or modern, it's not the it's not the filmmakers, it's not the audiences that are stupid. It's the studios who think they are. So I think this is just kind of caught lightning in a bottle where it's like you could write a teenage movie for teenagers about teenagers and speak right to them and do all this shorthand and they catch on. We didn't need to be talked down to. And so I think that was it too, is like, I was like 12 or 13 but it still understood everything that was going on. So I think that was part of the joy for me. And then every time you watch it again, when like the bad guys, when those slimy asshole guys in the mall come in, which, you know, like the older you get, the more you understand who they are and what they're representing. So it's just so smart. And again, no exposition. Like we don't have to know who those incel assholes are, but we get it now as adults are like, oof. Mm. And even at 16, you know, by the time I saw it the 40th time, I'm like, those guys. That's terrifying that they yeah. exist, but of course they exist. I know that guy. I go mm. to high school with that guy. So it's 
Well, they're, they're, the, they're the antithesis of what the heroes are, right? like at complete opposite ends, aren't they? They're, they are strong. Uh, even I know you were saying like, oh, the, you know, the dream woman of a teenage boy. I was going, no, dream woman of a 33-year-old as well. You yeah, know? <laughs> totally fair. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going beautiful, strong, independent, um, you know, takes ownership Smart. of a body. You know, someone suggests paying for her. She's like, that's not going to happen. You know, she's into, she knows the comic books. She knows Superman. I love all that. She's into video games, you know. You know, why the hell not? Why, this is a, a couple of amazing characters that have, absolute strength power you know they're funny they're hilarious and you know and they do what they want when they want you know how they want to do it i love that and i love that you know it, it speaks on so many levels and i can see why so many kind of families gravitate to this film so many kind of young people and people are still discovering it to this day such a great vibe and an energy and a vibrancy uh, and it kind of captures youth as well like you know yes it's an older dude directing and writing but when he was writing the script he literally went over to teenage girls and said what happened if all the parents were dead what would you do you know, and they were like, oh, well, we'll go shopping. And to right. be fair, yeah, as a teenage boy, I would have gone shopping as well. Of I'd course. Probably, I probably would still now go shopping as a 33. Of course you would. Um, yeah. and, and I get it. And like the only downside that the little girl, the girls found was that, oh, they're like, oh, well, there's no boys now either. And they're like, what, no boys? <laughs> you know, like that was, that, I love that that there was the the kind of, the the vast um, kind of understanding of trying to understand the, what a teenage girl is and wants. And, and again, I love as well, within the film, there's these scientists that are trying to predict what these teenage girls are going to do. They're like these stuffy, fat, white, straight dudes going, well, the science dictates that these these children will go somewhere where they can escape their parents and, and all this. And, and I loved... I love the fact that they're trying to rationalize what being a teenage girl is, which like, I don't, I don't, you know, you can't put logic to that. It's just, you know, um, you know, I've never been a teenage girl, but I imagine it's a fucking nightmare. Uh, I agree. Of I agree. And what I think everything that you said is so true. And what this movie does is, is it takes that stereotypical, you know, because Sam is a cheerleader and she is mm -hmm. in a cheerleading uniform for half of the movie. But, you know, it's like, she's not, I mean, she's that, but she's so much more. Hmm. And it's like, there's this idea, well, if you're a cheerleader, you fit into this box. But Sam doesn't fit into that box. She, like, it's okay to be a cheerleader and. And like, you know, cheerleaders hmm. are athletes. I mean, hmm. they get tossed around and that's a hard thing to do. I mean, in America, this is totally true. There are more injuries in any other sport in college. Cheerleading is the number one injury, like the most injuries, not football, not soccer, not hockey. Cheerleading, because you know what they do? They're throwing each other 30 feet in the air yeah. on one and a half inch mass. Wow. There's more injuries, it's totally true, in cheerleading than in any other sport in America. But it's like, it's still, even you know, then. You know, when I saw, when I saw like, I never saw Bring It On, okay. But when I saw the trailer for it, I went, oh, it's clearly a film because nobody would throw young girls 30 nope. feet in the air. 100%. I was like, I was like that's that's movie America to me. I was like, mm -hmm. that's that's over the top, you know, silliness. Uh, and, and then I found out, I was like, no, 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 that, that's that's real. That's, that's, that's spot on. Most yeah. of those most of those actors in that movie were cheerleaders. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, who could do that? Yeah, yeah, my wife was a cheerleader. She was a flyer, so she got thrown about. So she's still, you know, at 49, has lots of those cheerleading injuries. And then she was a coach too. So like, you know, so she she loved it. She loved doing it. Hmm. But it's like, it's a real thing. I mean, you know, like in, in, in colleges in America, big, big colleges like University of Michigan or University of Wisconsin or Stanford, the, the cheerleaders are on scholarship too. They're also scholarship athletes because wow. they are. And so, yeah. and, and again, it's subtle. It, this movie acknowledges, and again, we the, the backstory, this is part of the tight thing about their names. Like I said, how well-written it is because their dad is a colonel in the US Army and he's not in the movie at all. But what we see is he names his children Regina and Samantha, which are women's names, but they're called Reg and Sam. Mm, yes. They go by men's names and he's trained them up. They can use weapons. They have self-defense, you know? So here's Sam. It's almost like Sam becomes a cheerleader because she's like, I would like to be a girl. Mm. What's the most girl thing that anybody thinks of cheerleader? So I'm going to do it. Because my dad has raised me to be a street brawling, hair pulling, punch in the throat, eye poking, badass. Yeah. I just want to be in a cheer, you know, so it's almost like she's going the other way. And and so to me, it's really smart. Their names are so smart. You know, they, they aren't called, you know, Sabrina and Kathy. They aren't named things that are only female names. They have gender neutral names. Mm. 
very clever. I, know, I didn't, that's you know what? I didn't think about that. I, oh. I, I, initially, I was like, "Oh, she's called Reg. Is that, is yeah. that you know, or Reggie?" And I was like, "Oh, okay." And but I didn't, I didn't put in as much thought as you did, Tony, because you are you're an educated man. You're a teacher. You're, I am. You're a, you, I, and- I'm always, but I'm also stretch as my professors stop and tell me. They're like, "Nah, I don't think so." But the reason I think that this is true is because I know somebody. I know people like this. I I worked with people. One of them actually had a movie theater where Reg works. Who's who? There were two girls, and one's name was Thomasina, and the other one was John, and they were girls. And it's like, so I remember saying to Tom, "She went by Tom," and I was like, "So your dad just wanted boys, huh?" She was like, "Yeah." And that was it. That was the whole conversation. Right. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, you know, because and and I've known other Johns, other girls called John, who you know they're like the second daughter or the third daughter, and their dad is you know one of those like alpha males, and their dad is clearly one of those alpha males, and so he's raised them to be badass, strong women, but he clearly still wishes they were boys. Because when you enter your initials in video games back in the 80s, mm-hmm. you did your initials, but she just puts Reg. And like, mm-hmm. when we see at the end, the payoff at the end, he uses his first, middle, and last initial. Like for me, when I enter initials, it's my ARF, A-R-F, that's what I was right. That's my initials, like bark, haha. I used to do it all the time. I think that was super cool. Like, hey, my initials spell something. Yours don't. That sucks for you. <laughs> but she just puts Reg because she's Reggie. So there's this very smart, I think it's just so smartly done. And it's, again, shorthand. And when you think about girls who are called Samantha, who go by Sam, as opposed to girls who are called Samantha, who go by Samantha. It's a totally different yeah. kind of person. It's just like how many Jennifers that you know who are Jens as opposed to Jennies. Mm. They're different people. Yeah. Names matter. No, I, I think you're. I think you are right. I think you you've you've hit a nail on the head because he, the director went in with this love for strong female characters, yeah. you know, and you know he loves his Ripley and stuff, and um, you know all those kind of characters, those strong kind of performances. Uh, I think Ginger Rogers was a was a, an influence, I think, as well on the film and the characters, and and you can you can definitely see that, and it's it's quite surprising that there isn't more of a following for this film because like I do think it is like you said, it is kind of all the pieces kind of come together in just the right way. It doesn't outstay its welcome. It's tightly paced. There's like, you know, and it doesn't feel like it's just a set piece, a set piece, a set piece. It, they flow into this, even though it's so quick. Like you said, there's not much time spent, you know, doing nothing and stuff. There's there's always something going on. And, you know, there's some great throwaway lines. Like one of my favorite sequences in it is where she's being questioned about her health and because they this think tank want to get her the blood because they think it might cure their slowly drying up bodies sort of thing. Um, that they've been infected by the comet. <laughs> they were like, um, you know, have you have you ever had hepatitis? Have you ever had this? She was like, oh I thought I was pregnant once. And he goes, yeah. that's not oh my and he goes, and he goes, that's not important. And, and like wafts it away and she goes well scariest three weeks of my life thank you very much right. you know and that I and, love it and I love that I love that it was it was a casual thing it was a funny thing but it was also a scary thing you know it was, it was clearly an intense moment but she looks back on it and goes phew you know and uh, and you know you do look on back on kind of harder times or harsher times with a kind of you know roast into glasses and you go well that worked out in the end so it's fine uh, and I think that that comes across like lines like that what you were saying before about the whole army brat thing I I absolutely agree because I got a very I got a very Lois Lane vibe uh, I mean it probably, probably probably helped that they were referencing Superman uh, love that yeah. that's totally I didn't think that but you're absolutely right yeah because again strong committed doesn't take any shit. Army dad, you know, Sam Lane's an army dad and, you know, she can handle herself, doesn't doesn't wait for anybody to save her. And, and again, like this could have been like, this film could have been like, oh, where's the strong man to help me? And all oh, where's this and that? And and really all the blokes are kind of are really pushed to the side in this. So there's Hector, obviously, played by uh, Chicote, uh, Robert Beltran. Uh, so if you're a if you're a Voyager fan, uh, he's in this. And, uh, and he's great in it. And uh, he has like a few humorous bits. I love the bit where he's a cowboy and flipping them off and everything. And of course, funny. he's dressed as Santa. Yes. I mean, it, alternativity stories. Alternativity stories. You know, it's dressed as Santa. There's Christmas trees, there's signs. It is fairly Christmassy. And it, the it was sc- released uh, just before Thanksgiving. Ah, okay. So it is kind of coming into that sort of season, yeah. the Thanksgiving mm-hmm. season. So the holiday season. Uh, and it even has a red sky. You know, that's one of the key colors of Christmas. Of so, course. Um, it's probably one of, one of the more kind of uh, holiday 
like definite holiday films this year. Like yeah, yeah. Star Wars is clearly a life day one, and we've got our New Year's. <laughs> oh my god! Speaking of wobbly slasher films, our next my next one with Dennis has a couple of very wobbly slasher films. So. Really? <laughs> yeah, for uh, New Year's uh, Terror Train and New Year's Evil coming up. So listen, uh, New Year's Evil is really good. <laughs> I love well, New Year's Evil. I'm not going to spoil. I'm not going to spoil the ending. Okay, today. I'm not going to spoil wait. the ending, but yeah. you'll find Jack out. Just, which... Jack just dropped his review of New Year's Evil. I know. I just listened to it, and yeah. we have this. We have a lot of the same observations. Sure, about sure. Both, both the films. soundtrack saves it. Sometimes. Oh yeah. The soundtrack saves everything. Absolutely. Well, speaking of soundtracks, this one's yeah. got. This is Corker. This is brilliant. Yeah. I, I literally watched it two days ago, and I have been singing another. This is another reason you can tell it's low budget. They can't afford Cindy Lauper's version. The real Cindy Lauper. The yeah. real Cindy Lauper's version of of uh, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Even though this were, version is fine, I knew it wasn't Cindy Lauper's version. Yeah, of course. But, but I fine. appreciate it, yeah. and I've had because that song bangs. Listen, oh, absolutely. I feel bad for Cindy because that first album, she's so unusual. Every song bangs. Hmm. That that song that is like almost a perfect. Like you know how sometimes somebody there's like a perfect album. Most albums, you buy an album, you're like, skip. She's so unusual. And again, she, Cindy Lauper was very important to me as a young man because she existed like as a yeah. person who's kind of weird. And you're like, oh, you get to you get to be weird. And in all of her videos, Captain Lou Albano from the WWE. Yeah, yeah. In her videos. He played her dad in all the videos. Well, she, and then her she, mom, was, like a, she was like a main part of WrestleMania because she, yeah. she, she got like slapped around by Roddy Piper and that became a huge like yeah. big feud, didn't it? A big thing. Yeah. And that was like the first WrestleMania between the two of them. Again, of course you couldn't afford that because every song and She's So Unusual bangs. Like it's a, they even made a movie called Girls Just Want to Have Fun, the movie with uh, you know what? You uh, know Sarah what? Jessica you know, Parker. You know what? I have seen that. <laughs> See? <laughs> I've seen that film. Uh, my, so friend, big. Yeah. my friend, I mean, Ga- I, my friend Gary, put it on for me. He was like, "What do you like, think? It's good, right? It's okay. It's okay. I mean, it's not as sex positive as this is, but it's I, good. No, I, I, I think I watched that and like desperately seeking Susan the same week, and I was like, oh. mm, this one's better. Desperately. Oh, desperately seeking Susan is definitely better. That is absolutely a banger. But yeah, I think the soundtrack is good. I think I think it works. It's it's very upbeat as well, considering yeah. it's about the apocalypse. And they handle. What do you make? This is my biggest question for you. As I wrote oh. down, I'm like they handle the death of everyone so well. And do you think it's because they're six, they're seventeen and eighteen? Is that what it is? Is it, or do you think it's just? Is that a comment on their upbringing, or is it a comment on? being teenage girls what did you because they like are like Meh, that's it and i love that when people turn to dust they turn into orange dust so i didn't know mm. that i was orange on the inside oh really <laughs> did you i mean apparently i, mean, I am. apparently we're all made of brick dust and that's what it is because that's, that's that's what it's made of 100 percent is that's what, it, that's what, it was. what they use i um, think i think a little bit that you know i think you were saying like you were saying the teenage thing is like there is a lot of like teenagers are very like you know uh, it's a kind of disposable society. I think we still live in a disposable society, but it's very much like live for the moment, do this, do that, ah, react, do things. And but also like their stepmom is a complete, a horrible woman. Horrible. She's a monster. Horrific. Yeah. Slaps Doris. and punch. Yeah, Doris. Doris. Uh, <laughs> um, spe- actually, you, Doris. speaking of speaking of Cindy Lauper, I forgot to mention yeah. my yeah, uh, yeah. one of my tutors at my university was like close friends with Cindy Lauper. Like there was photos of her and, you know, still got on Facebook somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she was like, you know, busy mate. So I was like, that's pretty damn cool. You know, she is amazing. I just, I could, I could wax. Quite, and then years later, not that long ago, she won a Tony for Kinky Boot, which is oh, over there. You know, it's a yeah. place over right yeah. there in the North of England. I, she wrote all the music for Kinky Boot. I didn't know that. I really oh, yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, that's her. It's That's a great show. I don't know if you've mm. seen it. I, I've had a couple of friends who were in it. Um, oh, nice! And I, I, I think there was a film version, wasn't there? I believe there was. Yeah, yep. Yeah. There, well, there was. So it was a movie first. It was a movie, yeah. movie, and, and then, then they made the musical. Right. And I, we've actually seen. We actually had tickets to see it live, but then COVID's an asshole. So we've seen. Yeah. We actually years ago we went to the theater when they were showing the live on London on our screen. So we went to the movie theater to watch it live in London. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, the wonderful world of technology. Technology, yeah, <laughs> but it's a it's a banger. She's, yeah, absolutely. but it's amazing how she just she just keeps That's going. So, so there was it's it's a um, yeah. I, and she wrote the Goonies theme song too. So like of Cindy course, Lopper yeah. Um, good enough for me. It's good enough for you. Uh, uh, that, that's my rendition. Uh, yeah, that's excellent. They'll Very use nice. that. They'll use that in the remake of the Goonies. You know, save some money. We're never get... remaking the Goonies. Yeah. Well, I mean, give it, give it, give it five years. I'm sure someone will find a I way. I think. I don't know. God, I feel like Brolin will snap. Yeah. 
You think if they remake the Goonies, I just I feel like Brolin's got too much power to, mm. to let that happen. That's my yeah, hope. True. That's true. Oh. Yeah, I mean, Do- Richard Donner directed. He's no longer with us. Um, was well, I know they said they would do. They've all agreed if there was a good enough script, they'd all come back to the sequel. Good they've enough. All said that. <laughs> good enough. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's not. We're not here to discuss that. But anyway, no, yeah, no, that's no. very no. cool. Some, I love Cindy Lauper. I'm a big mm. fan. I'm. Uh, so that's super cool because she's amazing. And that's the thing about everybody. Everybody's got friends from high school. So you're like, oh yeah, Cindy. And you're like, oh, fucking Cindy Lauper. Now you're you're a you're a big music guy. Are there any other tracks in this? Because I, I think they're all good. Uh, I'm not entirely sure who does every single I don't, track. I, they were all generic mall band. Yeah. Um, is in my opinion. No, I thought they, they thought they banged. I thought it <laughs> totally captured. That's what dates it the most mm. is the music. Not even because when they go, when they dress up, when they're in the yeah. mall montage, two two girls just want to have fun. They're like dressed in drag, right? They're both dressed mm-hmm. in suits. They look sharp, right? Uh, when they do that, they're, you know, they're in dresses, they're in like flapper hats. So they're like totally trying to make it a little bit timeless when they're mm-hmm. when they're doing the dress up stuff. So that was obviously two girls. But the rest of it was like very 80s mall band oh, yeah. with synth. Yeah, no, I, I don't think there was one song in particular that stuck out to me other than it's like, now I feel like I'm upset at myself that I don't own the soundtrack. Yeah. I'm probably gonna find it. Yeah, sure. I, I I listened to it a little bit before, just a couple of the tracks. I think I think the one where it's like celebrate tonight. I think that one's pretty. That one that one claps as the kids yeah. would say. Uh, would slaps. Say. Was it say slaps or claps? I can't, I don't know. I don't know. I can ask my kids, but I think it's you ask the kids. You ask the kids. I'll ask. I'll ask. Them. Yeah. <laughs> but um. But yeah, I I think it was. It's nice. And again, they don't. Again, the songs don't outstay their welcome either. They're like, okay, just for this. Um. And it, they don't play the whole song ever. No. That's no. So smart. I just finished watching, there's a Christmas movie on Netflix, which again was made for Gen Xers. Brooke mm-hmm. Shields, Carrie Elways. You're like, every Gen Xer, you're like, you're going to watch this movie. So I watched mm-hmm. it with my wife. It's for it's called The Castle for Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll give away my Pop Gorilla's review a little oh, bit early right go now. On, go on. 40 minutes of script and 40 minutes of music montages. Wow. That's the movie. It's And te- five minutes of a dog being cute. But I'm not kidding. Like, they play entire songs in this movie constantly and they're like songs that are written for the movie they seem Ugh. it's like Ooh. really on the nose back yeah. anyway so this movie doesn't do that they're like no. get this in 30 seconds bang 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 and then we're going to get out and you're gonna be like "Ooh, i'm gonna hum that song for a while and then the next song comes in and you forget with that other one generic 80s mall song but it was definitely peppy and it, it fits the energy because right this could be what I love about it too is it could be dour, but they don't. Yeah. But Sam and Reg don't see the end of the world as a bad thing. They're like, "Cool, I hated everybody anyway." Yeah, people are shit. Like people, the people are like, you know what? Yeah, as 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 horrible as COVID is, you know, we've got a lot less horrible people in the world now. Yeah, you know, I had uh, this conversation in our Discord, not our Discord, yeah. but this Comics Motion Discord. I was like, "Do you think that COVID, like every time there's a new thing, as we talked about the Decepticon one, we're mm-hmm. like." Every time there's a new one, we're like, is this just Mother Nature's way of saying, listen? I literally, I literally I've literally said this day in and probably from day one. You know, we're yeah. we're overpopulating the planet. You know, again, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I've I've had it, other people have had it. I know people that have died from it. I you had know, it. It's, sure. it's awful. I do too, both. It's, yep. fucking, it's fucking awful. Like, don't get me wrong, but there is, you know, we've not been treating the planet very well for a not a, you know, for a very long time. So it kind of, you know, and if she's like, right, if nature's like, I can get rid of one eighth of the population. Yeah, it, yeah. I'm of, not saying I'm for it. I'm, no, I'm, I'm saying yeah, I get I'm, it. I'm, and, yeah. and again, and they, but what I love about Sam and Reggie in this is they're both just like, yeah, I mm. didn't like anybody. I mean, you can tell they're not friends with anybody, mm. but each other. That comes like, because even Reggie's boyfriend dies, Larry. He dies. He gets beat over the head by a zombie with a wrench, which is pretty mm. cool. What a weird way for a zombie to go to hit somebody with a wrench instead of just eating them. <laughs> awesome. Um, and, and again, you don't really see it either. You don't see a lot. Yeah. Like he's, he's, it's a shit. It's, it's the assumption is made that he's been eaten because there's he's carrying around a hand and he's like, yeah. here. well, but, but again, seven hundred thousand budget. We don't have time for that. Yeah, true. We spent all the money on getting that guy in makeup. These big, these big hollow eyes and stuff. Well, there's not many zombies, is it? In there, is there? There's the, Six. yeah. There's the the cop ones that are in a dream. Anyway, you've got you've got the guy in the beanie hat at the start, um, and then everyone that slowly turns into one that's already been infected. Uh, and even then, they're not really zombies. They're kind of just on their way to be disintegrating there. into dust. Yeah, just just withering away. Um, but this is kind of like in, in a way, and that's kind of like a metaphor for the 
the old world is is gone and this is a new world and they're going to start it. And then you've and you very much get that at the end as well, where they save the couple of kids that have also survived. And they st- I don't know, I don't know how well this that bit works for me. Like the whole bit where they're like dressing up and they're their classic family and they throw all the guns away and stuff and like we do not cross at the lights and all this. Um, Love it. It's I don't know, like part of me loves it and part of me is like it's like it's almost too much like sometimes uh um, no, it's totally fair but the thing is with her is that like in that moment like at the very very end like yeah, after very, like, we very... don't cross and then we're going to play football Boilers. in the street <laughs> and you're like wait you just said don't cross at the light but it's okay to play football in the street. we're talking ghost town yeah no you're right no i hear what you're saying but it yeah. was like that was the moment when they decided uh, to me like you said the metaphor of like we're choosing to adult now because mm. there's children Whereas yes, yes, Sam definitely. doesn't have any children, so she's crossing at the light. I mean, it's a little mm. on the nose, but it's also sure. like once you have kids, everything changes as somebody who's had who's had kids. And this mm. isn't true for all people. Not everybody, once you have kids, your life changes. Some people have kids and don't, they yeah. still suck as people. And I'm not saying I was a good parent or anything. I'm sure my kids would say, boy, you suck. And that's okay. But it's like, because all parents suck, right? For, <laughs> yeah. for, for one way or the other, like you and I were talking out there and it's like sometimes your parents suck because they suck. And sometimes your parent, you think your parents suck. And there's two yeah. different things, you know, but it's like with, with Reg and Hector, they're making the choice to mm. raise these, the right Ryan way. Ryan and Sarah, like the most American names they could come up with. <laughs> um, although the girl was Asian, which was nice. I mean, 1984 yeah. to see it, you know, yeah. It was there fairly was no- progressive. There was uh, there was one moment I find, I found uh, not very progressive, but it, it makes About me feel. Hector. Uh, yeah. That, that whole sequence. Um, uh, this yeah, there's kind of it, like you mentioned some casual racism, and and I was like, well, there's also some casual homophobia. Yeah, um, both, so the yeah, from the sisters. It's yeah, bad. both both from the main characters, unfortunately, and it it was it reminded me recently. I watched Blackula for the first time. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and it's it's great and it's fun and it's really progressive. There's a good script, you know, it's interesting, good performances, but Jesus Christ, so much homophobia in it, like Awful. you know. I, I, it was like literally it opens with this gay couple getting Dracula out of the the coffin, releasing it. Oh, Blackula, sorry, a different character, uh, Mal- Malawalde, I think he's called. Um, releases him from the coffin, and they're like, "Well, these two f words mincing around have opened up." They this drop coffin. that in there, too. and I, yeah. and that's and that that is also used in this, and it reminded me of Bill and Ted as well, which is a great movie. Apart from that one bit where they drop that, you know, the f word, you know, not the yeah. usual f word, but the homophobic f word. Yeah, um, no. And I that, agree. And that, that was the problem. One. You said it. You said the soundtrack dated it, and I was like, "No, that dates it." That's no, you're right. Thing. You're totally right. Yeah, because she says something about date night on the barrio to Hector because she yeah. doesn't. She's like really trying to just emasculate him yeah, because she doesn't think his gun is good enough or whatever, mm. and, and she's trying to take control. I understand. Yeah, that's who Reggie is. But at the same time, it's like, whoa, you're going after the size of his gun. Mm. Wink. And you're making racial slurs. But then immediately, as soon as he leaves, hmm. the two sisters sit down and are like, who's going to bang him? Yeah. Like they have right. a whole sit on the couch talk about who's going to bang Hector. You're like, wait. The female gays. They say he has this <laughs> tiny dong and he's racist. <laughs> and he's a and he's Mexican, so you're yeah. racist, but you're still going to bang him. Wow. There's also, there's also that bit where it's like, uh, what, do I, what do I get if I come back? Because he goes off yeah. to see if his family. That, that sequence. It, it Pretty was bad. Of, I was like, he goes to find his family and there's a little zombie kid and he's running around and there's some clearly dubbed lines in that they've just thrown in later. Like, there goes the neighborhood. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> or like hey, kid, <laughs> you know, he just wants his $2. That's all he wants. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. Better off dead. Savage Steve Holland for the hey, win. Hey, I mean, Better Off Dead is technically also an alternativity stories movie. You're right. I am it right. It is. I am wow. right. Wow. Excellent. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that scene, I just felt it was like, it, I, I love I love Killer Children because that's one of my favorite like horror things yeah, to yeah. go to. Um, but it was just, I didn't, I didn't feel it was necessary, but it was, it was there and it was fine, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like the rest of the film, I think is really tight. No, I agree. And I think it's one of those, you're absolutely right. It's one of those things that you have to make the choice to forgive it or not to forgive it. And as a child, as somebody who grew up in that era, w- when I was a kid, the word gay, you know, meant one of two things. Well, I mean, obviously the Flintstones will have a gay old time. So that actually still meant what it meant, it still meant happy for a while. But then when it became, you know, gay meant homosexual, there was also a stretch, I'd say, from like the time this movie came out, 84 to like 87, 88, 
were gay meant lame. If oh, I, raised, I'd say, I would say even later than, so even in my teenage, even, even in my teenage, early teenage years, probably even, even, I don't know, maybe into my late teens or okay. early 20s. So into the, right. So I guess, yeah. I guess, it's, yeah, it's a I negative high school in 91. Yeah. So it definitely was still happening. Then. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I was, I was in high school about 99. So it was still, it was still part, I think, of that generation or those okay. ho- horrible hand-me-downs uh, that we had. Sure. So we're sorry. We Gen Xers are sorry. <laughs> Blame you. Are you Blame you're your at generation. the cost 88. No, you're you're an old millennial. I'm yeah, I'm a I am a millennial, but I'm I'm almost outside of that, just yeah, yeah. barely. Just so barely. but we're sorry. We actually apologize <laughs> to you guys. But it was it was one of those things. And then once you get go to college or you graduate from high school and you live in the world, you're like, oh my God, what am I saying? Mm. So it was just one of those things that you just stop. <laughs> It's not yeah, saying, no, but so to me, using that word, the F word, because you guys use it differently. Like when I was on Max's show and we were talking right. about uh, Teen Titans and in, uh, we were talking about the Judas contract and the way that you knew that uh, she was bad, right, mm. was because she was smoking the whole time. Mm. And so Max was like, right, every time you turn around, boom, she's got a bag uh, in her mouth. Of course. Yeah. The co- yeah. Right. Because it, yeah, the it, context it, of that it, is different. Yeah. Totally. And nobody thought anything of it. I heard the word. I knew what he meant. I know what it means. Not a big deal. Chris says it on his show. And again, I, of course, hmm. because the context. So the word has different meanings. It's, cool. it's, cool. it's it, a cultural difference. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And nobody thinks anything twice of it, nor should you, because you, yeah. I don't want you guys to quit using words that because to you, then you're like, that word just means cigarette. I'm not going to think yeah. I'm not going to let that word not mean cigarette anymore because somebody else is. An of course, yeah. so I appreciate that you guys don't. And I think, but in this t- context, the way that Sam uses it, of course, of course, yeah, she doesn't yeah. say gay; she says it in the other way. And I think I remember, I remember discussing like cultural differences with um, when I was watching Evangelion, because obviously the characters are so young in that um, and sexually active or sexually mm-hmm. ex- doing sexually explicit things. But in Japan, thirteen is the kind of con- age of consent, so it's not. Whoa, you know, it's yeah, it's very culturally different, but it's not necessarily. You can't really say it's bad because it's 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 just different, and it's it, obviously in our world and in in our society that's a very bad thing, and you wouldn't be sexually active with someone of that age. But in there, it's like that's just the norm. So it's kind of it's it's interesting to see those kind of cultural differences and how and how they play. But to understand where they come from and why those words are right. being said and the context of them, and you can hear the difference. The reason I brought that up with Max is because you hear the difference, like when Max says it or when you say it or when mm. Chris says it or anybody says it. Yeah, you can you hear the tone it's just mm. like you know just pull out and that's how we knew tara was bad in teen titans because she was smoking like that was the code yeah. there mm. I, and here sam saying that word the way she said it it actually isn't brought out as a way to make her bad or culturally no. No, no 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 it's, no it's actually a way she's using it to needle her sister because the argument is well what if hector's gay and so they drop yeah. that word and you're like oof but, but she, that also brings out her insecurity about herself course, as well and the situation. Exactly. Because at this point, in the, the since the beginning of the film, she's like, that's fine. No one's dead. It's fine. This is normal. Whatever. We'll do what we want. And then you get to that lovely scene, which apparently they were going to cut as well, where Sam is on the car and she's going, oh, yeah, I have my cheerleader meet next week. And I went, oh, oh no, I don't. You know, Kelly's dead. Um, and you just get that moment of, like, realisation that the world has ended but it's it's very brief. But it's very it's very sweet. It's very beautiful. They were going to cut it. Apparently so. Yeah, I I read or or watched something, and they said uh, it might have been an interview with Kelly Maroney, and they said we're going to cut it. And Kelly was like, "No, this is my moment. This is my character's moment to to shine and to show you know that she's not just this tough broad. It's it's this you know sensitive you know lonely teenager who's you know world has literally come apart. You know." Um, and that's and that's it. And I love that little scene. And again, that goes into right. Let's cheer you up. Let's go shopping. The let's stores go. are open. You know. Yeah. And that, and that whole sequence. Um. That that mall is in Oof. like every fucking film in the world. I know. <laughs> in it San is. Fernando Valley, there's one mall that apparently no one shops in because they film every movie there ever. <laughs> um. I've got a list of of all the movies. Oh, I would love to hear it. Let's yeah? hear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly Maroney was was in three of them. <laughs> You're kidding me. No, no, I'm not kidding. So okay. you've got uh, Fast Times, it was called the Sherman Oaks Galleria, and it's Fast Times at Ridgemont High with Kelly Maroney as a cheerleader. Right. Uh, you've got Valley Girl, obviously a big inspiration on this film. Um, what else we got? Night of the Comet, Commando, 
Back to the Future, Terminator 2, Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge, Inner Ooh. Space, Crazy Stupid Love, and one of my personal Roger Corman favourites, with Kelly Maroney and with Mary Warren of Chopping Mall. I've not seen Chopping Mall, but to oh. the, he's in, this, in, a, in a Corman classic. I'm oh. all on that. I love Chopping Mall. It's, it's probably not even 80 minutes. Barbara Crampton, uh, Dick Miller's in it. Um, well, Barbara Crampton and Kelly Maroney and Roger yeah. Corman. I mean, I feel like I, I don't he, know how I missed it. He, he doesn't direct, but he produces Roger Corman. But uh, oh, sure. but it's it's from New World Pictures, so it's it's got his fingerprints all over it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. He didn't direct that many movies. No. Nah. But he's he's, yeah. he's the he's the he's the money man. He's the producer. He's the he's the genius. He's the puppet master. Um, he's the genius. Yeah, <laughs> I love did, him. Did you like seeing uh, uh, Mary Warrenov, who is a big Corman regular, um, like Death yeah. Race, and of she, course. She, is she the is she the principal in principal uh, in, in Rock and Roll, Rock and Roll High, High School? School? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember. Um, I know that's one of your big favorites as well. Oh God, I never, love. Never shut up about that one. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry, I can't. It's so important to me. I don't know. You can't see right. Up here. Oh no, you can't see because the Beatles yeah. one. I've got a Ramones lunchbox right up there on the shelf. Oh wow. I love Rock and Roll High School is a very important movie to me. And um one of my first emails I ever had, it's defunct, was Eagle Bauer Enterprises, was the name of my email. But then I realized as I'm like applying for jobs. Yeah. <laughs> people are like, I don't know what that is, but that's Clint Howard played Eagle Bauer. He's the guy who had the office inside the uh, boys' bathroom. Right. High School. Clint Howard. Oh yeah, Clint Howard. You know what? He liked one of my Instagram posts the other day. <gasps> the official. I have not read the book yet. Have you read it? The one that he and Ron wrote together? No, no, it I have not. It just came out. It looks pretty good. It's just like about their. It's got to be so wholesome, hasn't it? I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. The audio. I want. I'm going to get the audio because they read it together, and I think Bryce is even on. Yeah, I, I watched. A, I tweeted about watching Night Shift, which is. Oh, like, have you seen Night that? Shift. Yeah, love that. It's yeah, great. yeah. I, I was I was a little bit worried because I'm I'm always a bit worried when I go to these sexy, bawdy sex comedies. I'm like, oh, there's going to be something really horrible in it. And I was actually pleasantly surprised that it was not that bad in it. It was actually quite a nice little like love story and comedy yeah, yeah. and stuff. And yeah, so I, I dug it. I really got into that. And Clint I, Howard. No, I'm a big. I think Clinton Howard's a, he's a king, right? Oh, yeah. He just shows I, up in things. And I know he's in all of his brother's things. But he's uh, he he does a lot of Corman stuff, as obviously yeah. she does. Does, lot, does right? She's Clint. Yeah, it does a lot Calamity of horror. Jane and 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 Death Wave two thousand, which yeah, that movie is like almost perfect. It like, is, I, it is classic. I it think that's the my... only movie of his that he admits he lost money on too, because he tried to release it in the theater. Because why wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. Because people were people were, but now since they have made all the spinoffs, the mm. Statham brought it back, right? And then yeah. they've done other ones. So mm. I think it's made him plenty of money now. But I think in the moment, I think he actually lost money on, believe it or not, on, yeah. on Death Race. It's got to be. It's got to be one of his best ones, though. It's got to be. It's got to be. It's top ten. Mm. That's an, that's another podcast for us as well. Top five Roger Corman films. I love Roger Corman. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> she'll be in most of them, but I loved seeing her here. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that was part of the the thing in the moment, like for me seeing her in here, because it's like, oh yeah, look here she is. And then, but she's great in this too, and she's really yeah. her deadpan humor. Because you know, in the other stuff she's in, she's not funny. She's really funny. So funny. Um, she's actually, Robert Beltran and her are in another comedy film, uh, cannibal comedy, because there seems to be a lot of those for some reason, called Eating Raul. And, I've uh, seen Eating Raul. Yeah. Is it Ra yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's in Eating Raul. Yeah, yeah. That's her in, in that. She plays uh, with the, the other guy. I can't remember his name. Uh, that was well, a long while ago. Yeah. It? I've never seen it, but I've heard it's very, very good. So I'm sure I'll get around to it eventually. Um, yeah. But we're spending more time talking about other films. We need to talk about this. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's my own fault as well. It's my own fault as well. Um, but also, like, I, I love that mall sequence anyway. Like, I, I think it's too. it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of energy to it. I love the stuff where they're like, you know, uh, what should I wear? Should I use this? Oh, that one will go out of style. It's like, it's, so the, good. it's the apocalypse. There's no more style. <laughs> but, I think, um, but that also plays into, I mean, they're joking, but they're not. Yeah, yeah. They literally, because that's a commentary. Genuinely, being a teenager. Yeah, yeah. that's, a, that's yeah, something like they said, believe. Being a teenage girl, as you said earlier, is horrific, and mm -hmm. and that's part of it. Is what do I look like? How do I look? And I that's why I love those scenes because at, at both times they both end up, like I said, in men's suits, mm -hmm. and I think that's really interesting that that's something they both tried on, and you can tell from from the way it's shot and just the way the actors are playing. That's the first time they felt comfortable enough doing that, even though. Yeah. When we first meet Reggie, she's in the um, uniform, hmm. 
you know, the, the uh, uniform of the Chilated. usher. Yeah. It's not oh, the no, same. sorry, the usher uniform. Yeah, the usher uniform. It's not sorry. the same because it's still cut. You can tell it's cut yeah. for her. Yeah. It's different than it's cut for the men. So, like, you can tell this is both of their first time. I'm like, I'm going to put on this suit. See how I look? I look sharp. I yeah. look pretty good. Yeah. You know, um, Greta Garbo. Kind of a kind of a Annie Hall vibe as well, a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Well. I mean, as much as I hate Woody Allen, Annie Hall is a perfect movie. It, it is a good movie. Yeah. The queen. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going. You know, uh, I don't like Roman Polanski, but I quite like some of his films. I sure. don't, don't like Kevin Spacey. I quite like some of his films and performances. Uh, well, but we, if you wanted to do an alternativity movie, which I don't recommend anybody ever watching it again, but The Ref is maybe one of the best Christmas movies of all time with I, him and I, Dennis Leary. Leary. Yeah, yeah, I've I've heard of it. It's on the list. It's on the list. Don't worry. I'll, I'll get to get it, it from I've... the library so you're not spending any money. <laughs> Go to the library and pick it up, right? Get the DVD already. You didn't spend a dime. It's already been purchased. I'm sure I'm sure Kevin Spacey's out there trying to peddle it himself. He's like, buy my movies. Please buy my movies. Well, but, but it's hysterical. My, my, honestly, there's a line. I know we're talking about other movies. There's a line yeah. in there that I still, where he says, you know what I'm going to get you next year for Christmas, Mom? I'm going to get you a cross. So anytime you feel unappreciated, you can crawl up on there and nail yourself to it. <laughs> It is fucking perfect. Anybody who hates Christmas like I hate Christmas for all the reasons that they hate Christmas in that mm. movie, that is perfect. Oh, so good. Anyway, this Christmas movie. Yes. Let's talk about the mall scene. <laughs> Listen, here's the problem about the mall scene. Those like this, those boys are awful, obviously. And like we said, are off the top. You know, this is like the roadmap to incel mania are these mm. creepy boys. And I do you think that the writer tom he gives them an out by making them be infected or not i i because i feel like i'm bugged that mm. the that the main leader willie he, he takes the sunglasses off and you see mm. he's infected but the rest of the boys aren't yeah. so i don't know it's it's such a very uncomfortable scene um you're on edge the whole time because it is 1984 so you yeah. know you never know what you're gonna get with a 1984 no. movie with women no, in peril and what you're gonna do yeah but um what even, did you even like I, a film like class of 1984 you you get that you know what i mean you get right, that right. sort of stuff uh yeah um yeah. but yeah i think like initially i thought is he making some sort of commentary on consumerism like there's enough horror movies about consumerism and the the horrors of consumerism like dawn of the dead is a good example of that the classic example which is technically might be an alternativity story because uh, george a romero very briefly appears as a mall Santa, so and he doesn't look infected. It's, it's like blink, you'll miss it, but he is in it. Um, is he? I'll have to. Well, darn, I have to go watch that again. Oh no, I've I've still I bought all the three versions of it recently. I still haven't watched any of them. I'm going to do that as well. You bought the um, Snyder version too? Uh, so uh, no, no, the three cuts of the original. So the Dario, oh, like the original Romero. There's, a, oh, there's okay. an extended one, the director's cut, um, which is I think the theatrical one, and the uh, Dario Argento one, which is a bit bit more serious, less comedic. Um, music by Goblin and stuff. Uh, anyway, we're still talking about the films. This, this movie, one is great. Promise. This one is great. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know if maybe maybe it gives them... A, I mean, obviously, they all get killed anyway. But I think maybe making them more monstrous is maybe highlighting the monstrosity. Maybe it's like it's the, the inner evil is coming out of them, pouring out of them, and it gives them that look. I do One of my favourite lines in it was... Uh, I'm not crazy. I just don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of my favorite ones. It's just mental. And he's like, Bachelorette number one, Bachelorette number Yeah, that guy, the actor who plays Willie, he gave it his all. He's oh, like, absolutely. I'm going to be on screen for 10 minutes. I'm going to chew. I'm going to go full Shatner and chew the fuck out of this scene that I am in. Nick Cage levels of chewing, definitely. It's amazing. I know <laughs> Nick Cage is better than Shatner. You're right. It's, it is. It's, yeah, it's definitely, think- it's a camp performance, though. Cause he's like, Oh, I'm in a zombie movie. I better eat something. Mm. And, um, I, 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 cause to me, like what, you know, rewatching it, mm. um, as an adult, uh, uh, who has daughters, you're yeah. like, oof. as a kid, I never really thought about it other than mm. like, those guys are assholes. That's why I'm not friends with boys. Like, that's all I ever thought. Like 90% of my friends, uh, you know, when I was a kid were yeah. girl, like I hung out with the girls, like my best friend from high school is a girl. She's a woman now turns out, but at the time she was Chuck. a girl. <laughs> I know she grew up and she's a woman. And just, I was never like, I didn't like hanging out because these are who the guys were. Like, they were these guys. And I'm like, you guys suck. 
Well, you're, think- you're the you're the person I you know you're the the non female feminist ally I will always turn to when I think you know what Tony's going to have an opinion on this. But again, like, but you, but the thing is, you've studied that. You've studied the I have, yeah. feminist. Fe, was it feminist theory you studied? Or yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I always think I always think you know if if I can't speak to a woman about something or discuss something about feminism, I'm thinking. Tony will have a good take on this. He'll he'll know because you absolutely know what you're talking about. Unlike well, you. you know, unlike probably ninety eight percent of men on the planet. Well, in, and in I that still regard. feel like I still feel like even with all of that, even with the studying and the degrees, it's still I still will never understand. No, I still not. will never get. But it's just one of those things, like you said, like being an ally. It's always been important to me, and it's like that's why it's like growing up and saying like that's so gay, which I said, you know, in high school. Yeah, of that's what you said. And then once you get out of college, you're like, well, fuck, I can't believe I said that. I'm so, I feel. We, we all li- we all live, we all learn. We've all said horrible things, done horrible things. But, exactly. You know, it's, we, have so to, just... we have to do better. I just saw Spider-Man and we have to do better. And that I've is not one seen of, that yet, but I agree. Uh, that, is one of, that is one of the lines. I'm trying to do better. And, I love that. Uh, it's a nice I... callback as well. So, and I think nice. as, long, as long as you're trying to do better, there's, there's hope. There's, you know, I was in a very dark place recently and I saw that film and I was like, no, it's all good. Everything is roses. It's great. That's amazing. Well, I yeah. can't wait to see it. I'm glad that it made you feel that way. Yeah. And, uh, but of and course it, you have, you love Spider-Man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like, I don't do much on the podcast about Spider-Man, I'm sure, but, uh, well, I tried to do one this year, but Dennis wouldn't read the bloody book. Oh. <laughs> that bastard. Uh, no. You were okay. going to do the clone saga. We were, we were. Uh, maybe, maybe one day when I could be asked, because I read the whole thing and he was like, it's like two days before he we went, I haven't read any of it. I was like, ah, this isn't going to happen. Um, but maybe we'll do another Spider-Man. I do have a physical copy of something, so I'm, I think we'll do something. Send it his way. Yeah. 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 But, um, but yeah, I absolutely adored it. I won't spoil it or anything, but, um, you know, I, I think the spoiler embargo is over now anyway. But again, talking about other movies. Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> but, 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 but the reason I bring it up though, because hmm. Peter's one of those guys too, is like, hmm. I think, you know, and I think the reason the characters I relate to when I was a kid are those guys like Tim Drake is my favorite Robin because he chooses to be Robin. He doesn't force him to being Robin. His parents were killed. He's like, this is a choice he makes. He's a thinky kid. I love Steph, you know, um, and I know he's Tim is kids come out as bi, which I think is awesome. Yeah. And, you know, so he's not with Steph right now because he's he's investigating that other side of his life, which is sure. amazing. But I always love Steph for the same reason, because, you know, her her dad was the clue master and she mm-hmm. was a ge- she's a genius level, too. So. I like, I, you know, I've always just kind of been drawn to like, well, how can I analyze this? How can I think about it? And so when you know, I'm looking back at this movie, like I said, in the, even in the moment, I'm like, mm. get these boys. Like it's, mm. it's not even, you know, it's Jack and I always say, it's just text. They suck. Yeah. These are creepy <laughs> boys who couldn't get a date and they find two girls in their mall. And mm. they're like, huh. What I find really fascinating, and I'm curious to get your thought on this, is mm. they just tie them up with the intent to just kill them. And as though, which is good, Whew. I'm glad mm. that's all their plan is to do, but it's also like, is that them taking revenge out on every woman who didn't, you know, like, yeah. I'm good, like I, you get to watch me kill you because mm. you wouldn't date me because you're a hot maybe hottie. maybe they're because they're infected, their penises have all dried up. That could be too. It's possible. <laughs> dried up, fallen off, and they're like, oh, I'm so yeah, yeah. I've lost my penis, so I must kill other women now. I can't use it. Yeah, it could be that. I- <laughs> It's just my my fan theory. We'll say it's that. That's it. that's what it is. That's canon from now on. So say it. There's, yeah. there's no there's no dongs in this though. So Rio won't no be dongs. happy. There will be no nope. releasing. There's no anything. Oh, I mean, no. the closest thing you get is when she washes up when uh, Sam washes up in the bathroom. Yeah. In her dream sequence, but even mm. that is like pretty tame. Yeah, you do. You get the classic double dream as well, don't you? The dream within Ooh. a dream within a dream. Just keep shooting. Just keep running. Dream within a dream. So many layers of dreams. <laughs> Do you, you like that or do you not like that? Um, Did you think that was lame? Uh, I, I like Inception. I like Inception. It's just, you know, I, I quite like the uh, the South Park uh, parody of it was quite funny as well. <laughs> the, uh, in, it was all about the shepherd and everything. I just thought it was hilarious. Um, but, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I dug that. I thought Interstellar was phenomenal. And, you know, I'm not I'm not anti-Chris Nolan. Um, I, I do think I need to watch, um, uh, what was the latest one? Tenet again, because that was... That was a. That, I was like, it's almost like he's trying to get more and more confusing each time. I'm well, like, the problem with Tenet is you got to watch it with subtitles. Oh God, yeah. The absolutely. sound mixing is awful, and it's like I got my copy and I was like, what the fuck? And then I realized, then I found out later that was intentional. Fucking man, <laughs> I wanted. I, I'm glad I didn't see it in the theater because 
fuck off. I barely understood it on my screen. So no, watch it with subtitles. It's a whole different movie because then um, you know what's going on. You're like, when Kick-Ass shows up, you're like, oh, I know what he's saying now. Yes, yes. <laughs> Again, we're not talking about that. Movie. Again, we're not talking about that film. We're talking about all the other films around it. So they're inspired. Around Night of the Comet. Um, yeah, well, but, but I think it's interesting. You know, here's why I'm going to save us, sure. Dan. Because this movie, as you said, it's, you said earlier, you're cre- it's, it's kind of weird that it hasn't become like Heather's. It hasn't become mm. the cultural touchdown. But clearly, everybody has seen it. Like, people who make movies today... Can they, they love this because this is referencing Romero. This is referencing mm-hmm. you know other other movies. Yeah, like fifty, like those fifties kind of Atomic Age yeah. horror films as well. Yeah. yeah, and so it's it's making reference to that. It's making reference to Corman by having some Corman Corman actors in it, and so it's it's acknowledging those things while creating its own space. And I think there's a lot of people who've seen this who whether they remember it or not, or like me, they just saw it forty times. And it's just like <laughs> in their it's been imprinted just on lives their there. brain. <laughs> but it, but it's there because again it is very progressive. While Reg says the racist thing about you know, but you also she says it just after she's making fun of the size of his gun. It was a power thing for her. Mm, yeah, her, she obviously thinks he's dreamy. Whether there is an age difference there, there is or not, is irrelevant. Um, she's super sex positive. She just banged Larry last night. She's already thinking like Hector. Woo! Hey, he's a good looking man. I hope he shows up in a weird cowboy hat later. I'm totally gonna bang him, which she does. And then but then she like creates a like you said she creates a a new kind of new a literal like nuclear family yeah nuclear family right yeah but i think so i think there's just enough stuff that's really forward thinking to have an interracial couple as your stars and to have an asian so you've got a next guy white boy white lady asian girl that's the family adopted kids as well adopted kids yeah exactly so far ahead of its time and so i think the influence is there so while maybe people don't don't talk about it like they should it's just part of their dna it's like oh yeah night of the comet that was totally revolutionary and what i love about it is it doesn't comment on it being revolutionary it doesn't comment on that <laughs> it doesn't comment on that it doesn't oh, 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 it does not comment on it either do you know what i mean it just yeah. is it is I it like is movies what it is that, that just are there are some characters who are like oh you're just a dumb girl in this mm. but it, but reg and sam never feel like dumb girls no to themselves and they never ever think like like you said, oh, the girl. like when they're about to get killed by Willie and the incels, they're just planning on dying. And again, they're, they're trying to plan our way out and, and they hold their own as well. It's not like they're like running around like with the heads, you know, headless chickens or anything. They have that agency. They have that power. They have that respect. And and again, they they, they know how to use those machine guns, uh, even though they keep jamming on them. Uh, and they're pissed about it. She's yeah. like, and because Sam says, dad would have got us an Uzi. She's like, <laughs> And, the, and 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 Red says, yeah, the car wouldn't know the difference. It's like, and again, shorthand, there's so much stuff happening. You believe these women are sisters. They have a whole story. I mean, that's a great performance out of these young women. Uh, I'm really that, that scene it. as well, which goes to show their acting prowess and their chemistry uh, was improvised. So is it really? Yeah, the whole the whole Mac 10 uh, shooting at the car was improvised. So the, they wanted to shoot them, but they were actually jamming and they were losing takes or losing daylight. And they said, they said, right, the director was like, just go with it. Whatever happens, just go with it. So they jammed. Sam says, you know, you know, if the dad would have got a Susie's, yeah, the car didn't know the difference. So that that oh whole my God. that whole little section. And again, just they're so into their characters. They are, they're just there in the moment. And again, these are like, these are both like soap actors primarily. They were both. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Days of Our Lives and, you know, whatever whatever other kind of soap operas you have over there. Um, they were like, they were used to not having second takes or anything. It was like, just keep going, keep going. Do it in one. Yeah. yeah, just find a way to finish. Just keep going. Uh, and and that's what they did. And they were so used to that, that. That that just comes out so naturally. You believe it. The chemistry's there. You know, the ripping on each other is there and stuff. Um, it's it's great, and it's it's so it's so fun to to kind of watch. And I enjoyed it more this time again because I knew what I was getting. I knew what I was going to get out of it, and uh, and I really just really absorbed that this time. So I'm glad I'm glad I uh, I got to uh, rewatch it or suggested to rewatch. I'm no it like you said, it lives in your brain. So so I, I'm sure you've seen it a million times. I've seen it so many times, but watching it again, like, cause again, you know, anytime you do that, you go back and you reread something like when we did severed, you mm-hmm. know, it's like, you, you're like, okay, now I'm going to pay more attention. I'm going to look, I'm going to look differently. So watching it this time, like, okay, pay attention. I, I will admit, I forgot how few zombies were in it. You know, your brain says there's way more zombies because they're on the poster. Yeah. 
all over the poster. There's like the make the makeup is great, and the guy who did the makeup is uh, amazing. That same year went on to create Freddy Krueger. Did he really? Yeah, and wow. and Heather Langenkamp, star of Nightmare on Elm Street, auditioned to be Sam, but was turned down. And then got the part in Nightmare on Elm Street. So, well, here's the thing. You know why she didn't play Sam? They, they actually would look too alike. Yeah, her brown, and Catherine Stewart. Yeah, would have brown too much. hair. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Too. And there would have been, which would be like, oh, good, your sisters. But then people would be like, we have to have a line in here that says we're not twins. That's true. Yeah, you got right. You, yeah, absolutely. They look a lot alike. They yeah. have that same vibe. They're built the same way. Mm. Yeah. She wasn't quite tall enough, I don't think, Heather Langenkamp, if she was going to play Reggie. I don't think that would have worked. I think she's more, she's probably more about Kelly Maroney's height. So I, again, yeah, yeah. I don't I know agree. if that, that dynamic would have worked. But I know they they workshopped and swapped partners when they were auditioning a lot. And then, you know, those two came together and got the parts. And they're perfect. They're perfect for this role. Again, I love I love The Last Starfighter, but I think this is the movie that I associate with her more than even Last Starfighter yeah. because she's the star. And I just, I just it, again, talking about so far ahead of its time, 1984, and again, some du- random dude has top billing when you see the credits, but it's their movie. This is a movie starring two young women. You just said it, what? Mm. I mean, 700,000, it made almost 15 million. Uh, listen, I get pissy pants when, when uh, and again, talk about other movies, but um, <laughs> Peppermint was amazing. And it and it made money, but mm. it didn't make enough money to warrant a sequel. But then during lockdown, everybody's like, holy shit, did you see Peppermint? And there, it was out on Netflix. So they're like, is that con-? people thought it was a Netflix movie? Mm. But I went and saw it opening day in the theater. So I was like, wait, oh, Jennifer Garner got back to an alias shape. I'm gonna go fucking mm. watch that movie. Same thing with Ava, S- you know, same kind of situation where it was Jessica Chastain. So it's like that movie didn't do very well, but it, then all of a sudden during lockdown, people are like, that movie was badass. Long Kiss Goodnight, my favorite Tina David oh. in Black movie. Samuel Samuel Jackson says that's his favorite movie mm. that he's ever done. Well, we, we we covered it a few years ago on the on yeah. the podcast because you know it's a Shane Black film. I can't not do a Shane. Of course, Black. you got to do Christmas. Shit. Yeah, if we're gonna do of if we're gonna do alternative Christmas films, I've yeah. got to do something. And I, like listen to, I listen to you talk about that, and I love that movie. It's to, I mean, that is my favorite Shane Black movie. I, I mean, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is probably his best, but my favorite mm. is still Long Kiss Goodnight and Gina Davis. It's just. Oh outrageous in that she's so it, everything it's, it's like it's like oscar award winning you know it's like which it's a shocking she didn't win some kind of award for that i know but and that amazing. movie made money but again when it's a woman-led movie mm. this is where ria's whole podcast comes from exactly it didn't make enough money and so this movie i mean you, you made it for less than a million you made 15 million you, where, where's this and again like you're saying kelly's trying to buy the rights what this deserve i mean this movie needed a sequel i want them in a in a motorhome traveling mm-hmm. the world that movie i'm in i'm all in can you imagine oh. sam and reggie two years later stuck in a motorhome together oh my god that would just be hysterical it would be great i would love to be sam and reggie zombie killers on the that would be because yeah. because we just trust these idiots who are like Oh, it's 36 hours, but we don't know. They don't yeah. know anything. They're idiots. So anyway, I, I, it's just disappointing. And again, it, it goes back to how far ahead of it was at the time that you could put two teenage girls in a, in a movie. I mean, they were adult women, but they're playing teenagers. And it did well. And it was, I had no idea that it made, now that I know that, I'm even more pissed that there's not more. Do, do you think the film is kind of uh, a little bit anti-adults as well? Uh, because 100 yeah because, very because, well doll, that way. oh yeah and I, what i love as well is the deterioration of the adult think tank as they're described i don't think they ever give a name to the think tank at a random think. government yes yeah, with a weird lost like logo whatever you know what it looked like to me it looked like i don't know if uh, it looked like the thing that you put in the middle of a 45 when we, so when I was a kid, you'd buy a 45 and it have a big hole. In it. Oh, of course. And then there was a little yellow plastic thing that you inserted in the middle of it. And then it could play on the little tiny hole on your record player. That's what it looked like. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the little, the little, there's a little knob or something, a little kind of. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I could see that. Yeah, I can see that. Because um, you but, would buy the little plastic ones. So instead of just setting it on your record player, you'd buy the plastic ones to stick them in because your record players, you could stack. Because you oh, see this when yeah. Hector goes to his to his mom, yeah, you could set a record player on repeat. So, but you could also set it up where you could stack seven records, eight records, and then when the one was done, it would just drop the next one down. But you could yes. do that with forty fives if you had the little plastic, oh, like an, an adapter thing, kind yes. of type thing. Oh, that's that's cool. Um, that's what I saw, but yeah, I mean, I I, I didn't. I didn't see it. It's it's a uh, sorry. I'm, uh, you're showing your age now. I, I am totally. Old. I'm not. I old. own it. Man. I'm not. I know. Old. Uh, you're not old at all. <laughs> I'm not old. Um, 
<laughs> but um, yeah, I, I completely forgot what I was talking about now. Uh, no, the think tank you were talking. The think tank, yes, yeah, the yeah, yeah. ag, the the ageist. We'll call it ageist um, because I love that the disease actually affects their memory, mm-hmm. and they st- and because of that, they start acting more and more kind of evil and they don't really get they don't really care about how they treat these young people or or what they do with their bodies or like just drain them just do this just this and it's almost like the older you get the the less likable and nice you get the more grouchy grumpy you're in pain you you know your eyes aren't the same your ears aren't the same you, you know you're bleeding here and there whatever whatever your physical problems is it's kind of it's it's an accelerated version of aging um that also almost like because they, it's it's dangerous because they don't know it's kind of happening to them and it's almost like you know you get to a certain age and you just start hating everybody or you start like oh well i don't care it's got nothing to do with me <laughs> yeah. and you see that a lot with like older kind of voters and they vote for certain parties and things um you see like well that doesn't affect me so i don't care you know that sort of that kind of attitude and you see them almost like what is the word kind of like they're kind of apathetic almost it's not like an it's not like they're angry or mad they're just like i'll just do that or do this i can't remember what it is just yeah 100 cc's or whatever well they'll be dead if they do that yeah 300 it was 300 cc's but they're like yeah we don't care we don't care the other girl they say because they're and and the fact that the one guy um dr carter he's someone who says it he's like because the two nurses who um who sam fucks up and which is awesome i love when she and she just puts them in the lab again that's awesome but when um oh going to see Santa going to see Santa amazing. yeah really he, uh, that's so funny but when they um because they're like well these kids are too little blah 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 and then he's like oh it doesn't matter we've got the other girl and he's equating mm. Reggie with these children mm. like he sees her she's eighteen she's we we've learned as filmmakers mm. she's in charge of her body she's a badass she kicks people everywhere she can handle a gun she's sexually active and she's proud of it she's all this amazing stuff. You still see her as the same way you see this little girl. Hmm. So I think that's totally spot on what you're saying. Is yeah. like, oh, she's the same as that. Yeah. It's just it just seen as a commodity. Yeah. Pure, like purely commodity. seen, purely seen as what can I get out of these kids or what can I make them do or what can I force them to do? So there's there's definitely that vibe. And again, that just fits in. Uh, like you said, it's 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 expertly written. It is absolutely, it knows exactly what it's wanting to be, knows strikes the right tone, maintains that tone, which is difficult for any film to maintain like a really solid tone. You know, there's there's dips of like, oh, this is a sad moment here, but it never loses that vibrancy, that fun, that energy. Um, you know, and and, be- and before I knew it, it was over. I was like, oh shit, it's, it's finished fucking hell that was great you know and yeah. and that's it and it's an absolute blast from from beginning to end um i absolutely adore it i i i'm shocked that not more people have seen it i think you need to go out of your way to find it rent it buy it whatever it's you need free to on YouTube. it's very free on youtube which is crazy to me i, I chris I chris found, always says i if found it's like free on youtube it's bad that's, yes I that's wrong that is wrong i have found a lot of good films on youtube you just know, need to know where to look um i watched what i also watched last night i watched um well i told you about it i watched soul survivor which is also i have not by- watched that yet i didn't watch it because i started watching the beatles documentary instead I, I don't blame That's you. That's eight hours me. long, man. I got to commit. <laughs> well, it, it's not as good as uh, as Night of the Comet. I will say that. It's, okay. it's a very different film. It's like Final Destination meets It Follows. It's kind of that, but early 80s sort of thing. But it, it is also set at Christmas, so it does count in the alternativity. But that's his thing. Tom He's, Everhart, he is the early Shane Black. Yeah, absolutely. Apparently, it's just kind of like Christmas led everything. This one, this film is probably the most alternativity seasons. Uh, alternate, I don't even know the young title of my shit. <laughs> I call it different stuff. Alternativity stories. Alternativity stories. Um, you think I've been drinking? I've not. This was filmed on Christmas Day, no less, because the the shots they get, empty. the shot, the shots they get, not even the mall, the shots they get of just the 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 city itself empty deserted nobody around like they didn't am- have to block it off no you if you if you're eagle eyed enough though you can see the reflection of cars you can see a window cleaner here and there you can see the odd person but don't ruin it for yourself don't 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 imagine that don't see that just forget it cuz it's amazing and in fact this influenced a very good zombie movie 28 days later oh. Now, Jim, the main character played by, um, what's his name, Killian Murphy, 
-hmm. He finds an abandoned Mercedes, just like in Night of the Comet. Oh, my God. So Danny Boyle's seen it. Danny Boyle has seen this. Good job, Danny Boyle. Wow. Well, he should have seen it. I, I believe that. I believe that he did. I love to hear that story. I love 28 Days Later. That's a great one. That one yeah, thanks. It's amazing. Um, 28 Weeks Later is pretty good as well. I did too. Yeah, I like it. Robert Carlyle is in that one. Yeah. Now, uh, there's another thing I wanted to discuss with you as well, because um, much, much discussed on your podcast, um, Season's Greetings, is, is the man you love and loathe in equal measure, I think, uh, Joss Whedon. Sure. He's clearly seen this. He has definitely seen this and has even stated that Sam and the cheerleader, the idea of her character, the way she looks, influenced one of your fa- very favorite things, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Can you, can you see that? Can you see oh, that connection? Yeah, totally. Because Buffy, because Buffy happens when the movie happens. It's what, 94, mm-hmm. 92, 92. So it's not that far after. This. No, not and really. Buffy's, Buffy's still a valley girl. Yes. Yes, you're right. You know, and even though that sort of started to end, like the, the Valley Girl idea has never really ended. I mean, this is filmed in the Valley, San Fernando Valley. It is a Valley movie, Valley, Valley, Valley. But the concept of the Valley Girl, the, that Moon Unit Zappa did the song. Have you ever heard her song, Valley Girl? I don't think so. No, that she fine. did with her dad, Frank Zappa. It's worth a listen. Go, go yeah, hunt it down. It's I pretty will. amazing. Moon Unit, that's her actual name. Moon Unit. Moon Unit Zappa. She is the daughter of Frank Zappa. Cool. So that, that checks out. <laughs> of course. His other kids are like, what, Ahmed? I mean, Ahmed, which is a name. And then he's... I mean, you could have been Zowie Bowie, but uh, Moon Unit Tough, Zappa. Rough life. That's why he goes by James. <laughs> Zowie Joe. Exactly. Like, that, exactly. Um, like, oh, come on, Dad. Really? I know. That's outrageous. <laughs> I know. But anyway, yeah, so 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 Buffy is totally a valley girl. And um, no, I, I believe it. I believe because even the um, look of her cheerleading uniform in the original movie mm-hmm. is very much Sam. Mm-hmm. No, I totally... I would I I see that completely yeah. clearly. He gets the aesthetic of the badass um, woman, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I, I buy that. It's definitely a, a very tangible link. You can see. I'm sure there there was a lot more influences on Buffy. Like the X Men were a big influence. Kitty Pride was a big influence. I know. Of course. Um, you know, he went on to write X Men as well, where Kitty Pride was the lead character in that series. So um, that was a big kind of, and you know, she's called Summers. You know, yeah, yeah. Scott Summers, you know, all that. Um, so, yeah, that does it makes a lot of sense to me. Like, I can see, like, the direct connotation between Buffy and this film. And, oh, yeah. And it's it's brilliant. Like, there's, there's – I know we've talked – the thing about this film is uh, a lot of other kind of podcasters and YouTube people have said this – is it does connect. It's a very connective tissue film for other films. And that is why we spent most of this podcast talking, talking about, about other stuff. Yeah, let's talk about other stuff. And uh, but that's good, that's a good thing because it's in, it's clearly influenced things and it's clearly been influenced by things, but it is still its own unique thing. And nothing else is like this. Nothing else is as special or has this feel to it. It's totally, utterly a unique. Um, and it's, I, I won't say that about most films, but this is a unique feel uh, and sensibility, tone, tangent, you know, you name it. I know you're a big, like, uh, classical literature uh, kind of guy. Yeah. You like yeah. your, uh, your sense of sensibilities, your pride and prejudices. Sure. Um, do you see any any of those kind of links of that classic literature in here as well? Well, yeah, because, you know, and, and all, of the, all of the Austin heroines are... Um, forging a path that is against what is is supposed to be written for them and expected of them yeah but at the end it all every one of the six ends with the wedding they all get married at the end Mm. but they get married on their own terms right i mean like in the real world the pre-zombie world colonel is not all into hector no that wouldn't happen right right their dad is not like yeah yeah man yeah man Hector's my guy. I'm glad you're going to hook up with Hector, right? So, I mean, you don't see him. There's just a picture of him. They talk about him, Colonel Belmont, and he's what in killing Sandinistas, I believe. That that say. picture of him is actually the director, Tommy Bahat. Is it really? Nice. Yeah, that's fantastic. So he's literally that. he's literally their father in the script and outside, in the script, in the real life. That's amazing. You know, so it's all yeah. it all works. But yeah, that is no. Good. I see. I definitely see that connection because I think. And if, I actually loved Seth Graham Smith's uh, Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. I mm. loved that movie. I love the book. The movie was, eh. The movie took itself too seriously. I mean, Lily James is always d- delightful to see doing anything. Mm. Um, and actually, that was 
uh, Jack will be sad, sad to hear this. Natalie Portman was actually supposed to play Lizzie Bennett in that, but she was no pregnant. No way. So the, it was uh, Lily James, uh, who is great. Lily Don't James, get me wrong. I, I really love Lily James. I love that the most non-Disney Plus thing is coming to Disney Plus very shortly, and it's the Tommy Lee and Pamela Anderson like TV Is that going to be on Disney Plus? It'll that be is, on Hulu here. Yeah, yeah, for you, Plus. yeah, for you it's on Hulu, but for us it's on Disney Plus. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm, just thinking, I'm just thinking, yeah. that that whole sex tape thing doesn't scream very Disney to me. They have this no, thing. It I, doesn't. I, I don't know if they have it in the States, but they have this star thing where they call it star, and it's all oh, the more oh. it's all the more slightly adult. Or... No, that all goes to Hulu. That's not yeah. on there at all. That's what I yeah. thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. But anyway, different so, world. But but I think the reason that Pride and Prejudice Zombies worked is because it was like, well, you know, all, I mean, she's co-author, like it's Jane Austen and Seth Graham Smith. Like he, Seth Graham, yeah, he actually took, there's full pages of that book that are just Pride and Prejudice where he's not added a word because it's all public domain stuff. So sure, he I just guess, took yeah. it and then he just added zombies. So it worked really well. So I would not be surprised if he saw this. Yeah. I can I can imagine. Yeah. It yeah. it did it did make me um again Hannah was going to be the guest here and she's a big kind of uh she loves like the the peri- English period dramas the the classic literature like that she's always a big I think the original Bride and Prejudice with Colin Firth and stuff she's a big fan of and um, we did the podcast like Anna and the Apocalypse and you guys course, over on love. Pop Gorillas have reviewed it looked at the audiobook and uh, Jack and Rhea have all watched it I'm really glad you guys did that because. I fucking love that film, and we, we had an amazing. We had an absolute yeah. ball reviewing it, and I do get a lot of vibes from this yeah. of kind of Anna and the Apocalypse. That's why I thought it would have been a good one to do with Hannah and Nathan because it still has that would that have been of, great. Yeah, because yeah. I, I agree. Now that you say that, yeah, of course that's yeah. there. Of course, there's definitely there, there's definitely a link. Christmas zombies, strong because female when you watch characters. Anna and the Apocalypse, and there's the song tells you from the beginning there's no such thing as a Hollywood ending. Hollywood you know, how, it's Chekhov's song. Everybody, he's <laughs> not going to make it. It says it right there. But it, when he dies, what a gut punch. Mm. I love him as a character so much. But again, Anna chooses the guy who's probably her dad would pick. Mm. Like, And there's the whole line where she's like, I don't care about the sex. That's her exact line. Yeah. She's like, I, that isn't the issue. It's that you're a dick to me. Mm. And and Reggie's the same way with, with Larry at the beginning. It's not the sex. It's that you think you're going to pay me for sex. I'm going yeah, to bang you because I want to. Yeah, I think they say make it is the word. That yeah, I think they call it. Yeah, if you want to make um, it with me. So for people who don't know what that means, they're not going to craft. It's not crafting <laughs> where make it would mean something different now. Yeah, so uh, you're totally right. Uh, I mean, again, I'm assuming that gentleman, unfortunately, RIP to the director, the writer yeah, of, of, of Anna the Packlet. But I'm sure he saw this too. And he's like, yeah, yeah. That seems oh absolutely yeah you know, he, Reggie and Epoch. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, I do have to ask. I know we're almost out of time, but we yeah sure. Discuss. <laughs> it's a little suspect the rule that if you're inside a steel building, it's okay. I was okay, going to ask so you about this as well. Reggie's yeah. in a movie theater. I've worked in a movie theater. That is, I Me buy too. that. Me too. 100%. Me too. Yeah. You have too. Yeah, yeah, you've worked in theater. You've worked in live theater, so you get how sturdy those buildings are built. But Hector slept in the back of his truck. Mm. And Sam slept in a in a tool shed, and they also both weren't exposed. Seems like bullshit yeah. on the stage. Thoughts? And the guys and the guys in that big bunker uh, were exposed just because they let a bit of air in. So yeah. surely, surely, all of those things let air in, or they would Correct. suffocate. Okay. So, and she goes, "Yeah, it must be the steel." And it's like yeah. a lot of there's a lot of hand waving going on here. Um, I'm okay with hand wavy signs. Yeah, like that always stuck in my craw. And then thing two, I wanted to bring up, as we just say how it influences everything. Sure. Resident Evil 3, the one that Russell McKay, he directs, where it's got the bad, bad 80s feathered hair. Um, and they go to the desert to the radio station. Is that the video game, Resident Evil? There's a movie series. Yeah, the movie. Like, yeah, yeah, the movie. Thing. Right, have, yeah. Have you seen any of those? I've seen the last one, and it was oh. not good. <laughs> I've seen them all, so so I'm happy. I went and saw the last one in the theater with with one of my kids, who's also a yeah. big Resident Evil. Fair enough, fair enough. Anyway, I, like, I like the, the games. Third, I like the games. The third Resident Evil film, the one so PT uh, um, Anderson does all the movies. Yeah, the yeah. third one, hmm. um, and I don't remember why, but you know that was actually the worst of them all. But it is very. It goes to Vegas. And there's all kinds of stuff, but it's very Night of the Counter because they didn't even end up at a radio station. Ah. And that's it. And I love the the idea of the radio station. Them coming to it's like because they they hear the the radio voice. And, Most you nineteen know, eighties thing ever. Yeah, I'm I, I'm sure that's like 
start of like Starship or something. It's like, hey, from San, San Francisco Radio. And it's like that voice. I, ca- I can't remember what it is, but something like that. And then it's like, yeah. we built this city. I, yeah. think that, I'm pretty sure that's the intro. And he sound, it might even be the same guy, but I wouldn't be Probably, surprised. Probably, because he's um, like LA radio guy. Yeah. Yeah, he sounds like the guy. Uh, and then they find out it's like pre-recorded and stuff. And and again, another reference to Valley Girl is Sam gets out the soundtrack and chucks it behind her head. We're not Valley Girl. We're a bit like Valley Girl. We're not quite Valley Girl. You're right. Uh, oh my God, that's brilliant. Wow. Yeah. It's so good. I'm so glad. I, I mean, I, I sorry, Hannah, that you weren't here. Yeah. But I'm and, glad and I got- And Nathan. And, and Nathan. Nathan. Sorry, Nate. <laughs> and, and listen, but I'm thrilled that I get to do this because this is such a great film. Thanks, Dan. I, I mean- Oh, my pleasure. It, it's- Watching it again, I'm not going to wait as long. It's been years since I've seen it because I feel like I could probably act it out. You know, there's some movies where you're just like, I can do all the lines. This was one, but it, but think, looking at it from this lens, I had a ball. It's not perfect. There's no no. no. It's, but it, it is. It's very. It it's is, very B movie. It's very cult. Um, you know, but it's enjoyable. It's perfect for your show. Oh, absolutely. Also, I'm with you. If you've not seen this. Seriously, I'm sure you'll put a link in the show notes to the YouTube video where you found. Yeah, it. I'll, uh, there's there, I, I I it's one of the most when I when I search for a lot of these films, I go to YouTube first, and I'm like, right, let's have a look for a full movie. Da, 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 da. Um, let's check the upload date because usually, obviously, they're religiously taken down. So I'm like, right, what's the most latest one? And I found like seven or eight versions of this movie. Yeah, in HD quality That's that you I can want. watch. Like unbelievable. You know, it's it's mental, and and I don't know why. They're not pulling it down. Maybe they don't care particularly. <laughs> Maybe well, that's they're... weird because if yeah. Kelly wants to buy the rights back and you're just giving it away, Throwing it away. Free, that seems like somebody's being a dick. Yeah, I think so. But like we said, the producers did have an issue with Tom and his direction, his writing, literally the whole thing. And I think- So they, they didn't get it is yeah, what I'm hearing. They basically did, just didn't understand it. And they were like, right, we've made it. We'll put it out. It's a thing. You've not got that much money. You've worked with the money you've got. You've created a full film. Yeah, all right, we'll put it out, whatever. Um, and I think it was a limited release as well, which is which is quite to shocking. Still make 15 million. Crazy. Yeah, to be a limited release. I don't know what it was like in the UK as a release, um, but it was limited in in America and and again, still still did gangbusters. I would like to look at like what was out that weekend. I've not done that research, but I would like to see what else was on, uh, just to kind of get a kind of better understanding. Maybe it's just a load of, I don't know, melodrama or something i don't i don't know what was popular in 1984 but maybe there was something to it that it wasn't quite a good weekend for movies or maybe it's just a fun date movie who knows like could be anything um it could be anything i enjoyed the shit out of it so <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for asking me to watch it again Oh, my pleasure. I've got a few more little little things I want yeah. to say, and then uh, I've got a few comments, and then we'll we'll head off. I know you're a, a busy guy, and I appreciate um, making the time with the time difference involved with all this. I well, appreciate you, man. Uh, Thanks for having me. You're great. Um, so, Teenage Comet for Zombies, original title. Crazy, right? Yeah. Why didn't they use that title? Would have been a... I don't know. It fits so much better with the tone, the idea, everything. Um, Night of the Comet doesn't sound... It sounds a bit too serious, I think. It sounds a bit I think that's what they wanted it to be, though. By you doing that, you're trying to trick the audience. You're trying to get the adults to watch. If you call it Teenage Mutant Combat Combat Zombies, they're like, meh. Yeah. But it's also, it would have been marketed towards kids, teenagers, and people that want to see that sort of stuff. I just think it would have fit the film better. And obviously Sam says it within the film as well, um, you know, as a reference. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, again, I think it's all, the producers are getting too involved again, even though I think producers sometimes do have a point, (laughs) you know. Of course they do. Uh, points um uh yeah so it was the remake treatment was was going to be courtesy of roxanne benjamin who has done work on southbound and xx so xx was a horror a female horror movie com- uh, anthology film and southbound was as well uh she finished the script in uh in october 2018 no she got the job finished it in march 2019 but then there's not been any news since she she was keen she was like i've i've written the code i've got it i understand it i'm with it Let's go make it. But again, nothing, no no word on that, unfortunately. Uh, speaking of good reviews, uh, Neil Gaiman, you know, novelist, extraordinaire, filmmaker. Um, king of the world. King of the world. He actually reviewed this for Imagine magazine. And he said the film was one of the most amusing, witty, imaginative, and thought-provoking films I've seen that is, was made with no budget, and it is also cheap exploitation. So You got it. You got Neil it. You understood. 
Yeah, he absolutely gets in. A lot of the reviewers did, and that was probably the best short one I could pick out. But yeah, it's uh, just just mental, mental good movie. Go see it. Listener comments. Uh, right. So I asked, you know, does everybody think of the movie? Are you keen? So uh, Dan Burgess, who's been a former guest as well, I think I think I might have turned him on to this because I think there was one of those uh, Twitter things where it's like post loads of movies that nobody's seen. And I was like, right. Duh, 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 duh. And now the comment was one. He's like, oh, I've not seen that one. I was like, give it a go. And he's commented and gone. Great film. Excellent. Thanks, yep. Dan. He's couldn't right. Ag- couldn't agree more with Dan. Uh, and our friend, obviously, very, very dear to our hearts, loved one, Jack, has commented. And he said, it's a true idiosyncratic, iconoclastic indie. It never does what you expect. That should be celebrated, as should the exterior cinematography and interior set design, which belie the meagre budget and wouldn't have Buffy without it. So for that reason alone, I give thanks. So he's actually, he says a lot with a little, and we've not even touched on interior set design or cinematography or me. Is that that film degree at work? I know, right? I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the thing we don't have that he's very good yeah, at. Yeah, I, I, a lot of times I'm like, you explain that to me. I'll just ask, you, like, you tell me why that so, works. So concise, so concise, so dedicated. So, like, that's why I yeah. love those reviews. That's why I love the Pop Gorillas. Oh, I know. Everything. Yeah, he's the best. It's yeah. so, so good. Anyway, and he's also, check out Pop Gorillas because Jack has also reviewed it, which I've listened to. And again, very, very good. Very similar lines to what he said here, but still go and listen to Pop Gorillas and uh, enjoy a review in less time than it takes to listen to a song. Oh, I know it. I know it off by I know it Got better it. than the the name of this season, this theme month. I can't fucking say. Uh <laughs> you're the one who came up with such a complicated title. That's, you, that's on you, my I, friend. I spent a lot of time thinking about that as well. It's a good one though. I love it. <laughs> so yes, so that is that is it. That's all the comments. Now I know you're not currently on Twitter. Are you on other social medias? Can anybody reach? Not right now. I'm just taking a break. I haven't decided yet. I don't know when this is coming out. I may be back on by then. I may not come back it, on. You know what? It's coming out on Friday. So that will be Christmas Eve. Ooh, no. So I, yeah. I've made the decision to stay off at least until the new year and we'll see. I actually went from just not logging in to actually yeah. doing the shutdown and it gives you like a month. So it gives me a chance. Yep. So you just, my website is arfarina.com. Yeah, I'll, I will most, tag you in that. I will link. Thank you. I'll link yep. all and the podcasts course, pop, as well. Pop Gorillas and Pop Gorillas. Um, uh, Comics Indie Comics Spotlight. Uh, yep. Indie Comics Indie Spotlight. Comic Spotlight. Seasons Greetings. I'll, I'll, I'll tag them all. Tag them all. Yep. Yep. It's all in the comic. Most of those are in the Comics in Motion feed and then Pop Gorillas. We, yeah. we, we started on Comics in Motion, but we just spun off because it's like, when it got to the point where we were doing so much, we didn't want to like overwhelm. Cause at first it was like, yeah, yeah you can add one to our show. And we're like, Oh yeah. <laughs> but now, now they've got like, now they've got like two or three a day. I think it feels right. like. So yeah, that doesn't yeah. work. You, you don't want like, to do that to someone else. Like, you don't want to exhaust people. It's like, Oh, like, I, I have to play catch up with, you know, with, you know, Mike's show, uh, genuine chit chat, yeah. which is a great show yours, you know? And like, I, I tend now, I, t- I tend not to, like, I used to listen to like Kevin Smith and all those other people. I'm like, no, no, I've got to listen to the people I genuinely care about now. Exactly. I'm the you same know? way. And I genuinely always, a put in the effort. people that I don't personally know. Hmm. Um, although you're on one of the ones of the people I don't personally know. Oh. Now the podcast starts. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's an excellent show. I yeah. mean, Final Girls, uh, Final Girls UK. Oh. Is it? Is a is show I love. Oh, I'm- man. I need to check that out then. I need to check but that out. They're, they're doing teen horror season right now. They're Ooh. on like a, just an episode 12 of teen horror. So um, they do they do like themed seasons. And so it's the cross section of horror and feminism. It's okay. An excellent show. And then um, there's one out of Canada called the Top 100 Project where this married couple who have who are also film people, they, they did the AFIs, Top 100 Films of All Times, and they just yeah. kept going. So they've done like 400 shows. They're so fun. Every Monday they drop it something. Is a question on your podcast? Do you have all the all the times uh, links to all the times you've been a guest? I don't. No, you should do that. I do that. You should do that. Yeah, I'll because, do that. I'll start doing that. Pe- people want more Tony in their life. I know oh, I do. Well, thank you. I know that. I do. I know everybody else does. So I th- I know I know I do it with mine, but it, it's purely kind of to promote. You know, it's it's more like oh, here's some more of me. But it's all on the like, website. I have yeah. those, but I don't yeah. link them in the podcast. No, 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 you, no. On the website, I mean, put them on, on the website. website. Yep, yeah. you have the links. Yep, there's a yeah, link put them. Yeah, put them here. on the website. Yeah, that's. Yep, I mean, yep. that's what that's what I do. So I I, I recommend you do it too. You know, okay, um, I'll I'll make sure they're up to date. You better. You better. You better. I will. I, I want more. I want more. Um, all right. Thank you, yeah. friend. 
so so good um you can find me at the usual places so uh so it's twitter it's at dan underscore bores uh facebook it's at secret bores and on instagram i'm doing this from memory now i'm, I'm trying to be really good uh at spider dan secret bores um yes and uh if you uh i'm just gonna read it now because i've got it here i'm lazy it's it's oh. late it's late i'm hungry uh <laughs> I want to drink. Me too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so yes, you can find me on all those places. Uh, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to use the hashtag prepare for prattle when you interact with us. Uh, it's, I mean, it's mostly me, but you know what I mean. Uh, right. And for everything else you need to know about the podcast, swing over to Spider-Dan and the secret balls.com on the World Wide web. And again, go see Spider-Man, No Way Home, just top Spider-Man content. You'll love it. I, I, I've not heard. A, I've not heard a bad thing about it. You know what I like is that we've not had any negative fan shit because good because I, I like I was exp- all year I've been dreading this when it was going to come out and be like so many negative and shitty Spider Man fans and I thought there might be a DC contingent of like review bombing or something or like what but Zack Snyder's Justice League was so much better but no none of that all positive all good amazing. The world is nice. The world is good. And yeah. And John Watts just got a deal to direct Brad Pitt and George Clooney's next movie. Oh, and he's doing Fantastic Four. And he's going to do Fantastic Four. Day one. That's a good day. That's a good day. Yep. But, uh, John Watts. He's a, yeah. he's a great, I don't know him, but I know somebody who knows him. And she's a big fan of, of John Watts. She says he's you do. Delight- you live, in, you live in America, Tony. I assume you know all the celebrities. No, no, no. It's, you know, it's just weird that a woman I teach with, the woman who hired me. Oh, of course. Her, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Her you, daughter you is me on to, um, Yep. And, she, and yeah. she produced, she actually found it. Like she produced his first movie and then she got him Cop Car with Kevin mm. Bacon. Yeah. And then Cop Car is what got him Spider-Man. Spider-Man. So, yeah. um, and he actually, John tried to get Cody to produce the What If, the what if show. Mm. Yeah. But she was not interested. She likes doing indie stuff. Yeah, fair enough. I, I I respect that though. I respect that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, her movies are really good. Robot. The, the art. The art. Her. The art. Yeah. The the art of self defense was a fucking fantastic film. Yeah, and you you talked about uh, Robot and Frank on your show. I did. Yeah, Robot and Frank. Yeah, shit. Yeah, that's her too. Yeah, I remember yep. you saying. Yeah, fucking hell. Yeah. Um, yeah well, I think I'm crazy. Might, I may well. I may well mention. Um, I might do a Patreon of top five cult movies I've seen this year. So art of self defense might make it on there. Maybe. Uh, that was fantastic. Yeah. It was so smart. <laughs> I laughed my ass. I know you're not supposed to laugh ever in that movie, but I laughed. No, lot. no, it, there is a comedic element, and I, I enjoyed the the radicalization. Iceberg, I feel oh, like good. he, I feel like he knew who he like. I feel like in that movie, he knew he was playing a version of himself. Yeah, what? a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, so well, brilliant. Even Zuckerberg is kind of a version of him, anyway, isn't it? It's kind of you can right, kind right. of see the the. There's some connective tissue there, um, but yeah, yeah. like fan fan anyway. fantastic. Anyway, well, I can't to- wait. We've got to go. We've been here too long as it is, but um, I want to thank my patrons on Patreon. I'm Jack's Music's Paul Mello, Max Byrne, Tony Farina, Scott Hodgson, Simon Cotton for their continuing donations. It's very much appreciated and helps Prattle World keep on turning. And if you ever find yourself in a position to help the podcast, please consider it. Just like Tony here, he pays and he gets on the show. So that's worth gold. That's worth I mean, more. If you want on, you either have to be angry, Andy, or you have to pay. Those are your two ways. <laughs> That's my only way. Or Dennis no. or anybody. No. Or Dennis. no, I'm just kidding. No, no. I will. I would have you on even if you didn't pay. I appreciate it. I would you absolutely pay. have you on. But I know you've got to go. I know you've got a busy day. And I've got a, yeah. a busy evening of wrapping presents. So thank you again for joining me for Alternativity Stories. Thank you for having me. Got it right this Loved time. It. Well, I can't <laughs> wait. We'll talk. Nice. You said it right. And we'll yeah. do. We've got. Obviously, we've set up. We're also. We are also said maybe we're going to do a top five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's coming. That's coming. That's coming. Top five want to Shakespeare do that? adaptations. That's going to yeah. be tough because I haven't seen the Macbeth yet, but I feel like that's probably going to yeah be the top five I'm with s- the bullet. I'm seeing the promotions now. I think what I'll do is I'll probably have I'll probably let my, allow myself one adaptation of each play. I think I think that's I think how that's the way you have to do. Yeah, because it, it could all just be Hamlet and Macbeth. <laughs> Right. Yeah. You have to, you have to be like, okay, wait. Yeah. We've yeah. got all these podcasting ideas. Let us know guys, which you think is the best and we'll, we'll jump on it. Uh, I'm going to get more, po- more of the fellow podcasters on this year and do a few more things, you know, uh, well, all the promises I made this year probably didn't come true, uh, but we'll see what promises I can fail to deliver on uh, this year. And uh, I'll try and get my patrons more stuff as well. Uh, I'll oh, try a little man. bit harder, but thank you again, Tony. You've been a You're lifesaver. Welcome. Really do appreciate this very last minute save. You're amazing. No problem. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.